Hi writers, so in this first installment of the Let's Write writing series, I want to talk with you about structuring a uh, the 15 beats that comprise a completed beat sheet. And um, so let's see, our objective is to um, complete a beat sheet and also I'll say understand how a beat sheet works. And finally, I want you to be able to um, complete your own beat sheet. So that's, I guess, kind of wrapped up in the first objective here. So a beat sheet, uh, if the term was actually coined by Blake Snyder, a um, Hollywood screenwriter, and he wrote a book about story structure called Save the Cat. And he wrote a um, sequel to that called Save the Cat Goes to the Movies. So if you want further information about um, the beat sheet, then I would definitely recommend reading the book. And I love um, the idea of the beat sheet because it's a great way to outline your story, your novel, your screenplay. Um, pretty quickly and just really make sure you're hitting um, major story points that um, people tend to look for even unconsciously or subconsciously when they read a story or watch a film or whatever. So I'm going to be gearing this more towards written story as opposed to story that's for the screen though. So more for novels. Um, so Yep, so I want to, in this video, get through um, the first few beats and we'll see how far we get um, in terms of time. I don't want to make the video too, too long. So, um, so let's talk about Kate. And Kate is a character I've invented. And um, this um, story that I'm using as an example is going to be more of a, you know, comedy drama drama or a dramedy and um, I like the independent film feel so something kind of like Juno, Little Miss Sunshine um, meets Baby Boom in a way. So it'll have that independent feel but also have some commercial elements to it as well. Um, and Kate, to me, is a early, early 40s, maybe late 30s, um, mom of two, um, married, and um, also, let's see, high power job. And I think there's a lot of comedy in, you know, a type A personality who is forced to kind of, you know, relax. So um, this is a sketch that I'm working with, dealing with her, and, um, and we haven't gotten yet to the beats yet, so this is kind of just prep work for that. So and this is something that I've come up with, and that's five sectors for character problems, and I think it's really important to establish what your character's issues are going to be, and I find that these are the areas um, where humans experience change and therefore good things and bad things, difficulty, struggles, problems. So work, romance, family, friendship, and health. And if you could think of more sectors, definitely um, email me, let me know, or you know, leave a comment or whatever so that I can include that. I'm always looking to get better, so that would be great. So I've decided usually I pick somewhere between three to four um, sectors for a um, character to, to have to overcome something. In this case, I chose work, romance, and family. So these are the things that Kate is going, these are the things that Kate will have to, um, this is where she'll have problems and where she will ultimately um, overcome and become a better person. Through these problems, she'll become a better person. Um, so 
here's the title again and the first beat here is the opening image now again this is more for screenwriting so we're adapting um, we're adapting these beats to the novel and so instead of an opening image where it sets the tone for the story um, and suggests the primary problem we're going to come up with what I call the disturbance and a disturbance is, is just one way of opening your novel and that is to have a you know a big problem or a small problem something to just get this and you know get you get the reader into the story immediately so disturbance is a problem that um, immerses the reader into the character's world immediately okay and it could be big or small and in this case we're going to make it um, something and again we want to um, give a snapshot I think of the of the main character of the main character pretty much um, and, and the character snapshot of the main character's problem um, beforehand um, and so I would say that Kate's problem beforehand is uh, priorities are mixed up where she doesn't put her family first she, her work comes first and so the disturbance I'm thinking of is that she oversleeps for a major um, meeting or a major presentation and again it doesn't matter if you don't have everything figured out to a T. You just want to kind of have a, a ba very, very basic skeleton of your story, what you want to happen throughout. So let's say she oversleeps for, for a major presentation, but within that scene, we can have Kate, we can watch Kate, um, you know, snap at her husband, ignore her kids, you know, something like this um, and and just be so focused on getting out the door that she you know um, you know doesn't make the kids lunch or whatever etc something like that but in this problem and we want to see what happens when she oversleeps does she make it to the meeting does you know what happens so we're immediately immersed in her world um, and we see things like her home we see how she dresses we see her car we see so we get a glimpse of and then we see how she handles stress um, you know so we just get a, a, a real snapshot glimpse so instead of a formal opening image we have our disturbance and um, so that's our first beat. Second beat is that the theme is stated. Um, and this may be more, you know, metaphoric in a novel. Then again, it might not be. So let's just go ahead and treat it literally and you'll see if it applies for your work. So it says a statement or question or question or statement indicating the story's main thematic idea. Um, spoken to the main character or in their presence, but they don't understand the truth. So <clears throat> the question is, what is the message or the truth that we want to communicate? So the truth or the message for Kate would be that family comes first, right? Um, something like that. And so I'm thinking that in the scene, um, Mm, if she's an ad executive, let's make her, you know, something that's high pressure and where it's the rush to, to get the job done, that kind of thing. Let's say that the person, the client, and let's say she gets it. Let's say she, she makes it happen and the client glances at her desk and afterwards says, you have a beautiful family, Kate. And she says, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, you know, he glances, he glances up, 
left of, of her. Um, because family always comes first, right? Family always comes first, doesn't it? And then Kate, Kate blinks. Absolutely, Greg. Family first. You know, little does he know that she is not able to put her family first because she's so busy with this job. So it's kind of ironic, but whatever. Um, so just something where, you know, it's a work scene, but that, that's what I came up with when I thought about family comes first. This is this was the image that came to my mind. So um, there's that. Um, and I'm going to stop the video here. We're going to move on to set up in the next video. So uh, we've covered the first two beats here. And so you can take a few minutes to um, see what see what comes up for you when you think about your story and um, I'll see you back here for the rest of the video or the rest of the series for the rest of the beats.